It is time once again for the Summer Shift presented by U.S. Steel. Episode 6, we've had some forwards, we've had a coach, we've had a defenseman. Now we get the goalie, Casey DeSmith, joining us here on the Summer Shift. Casey, good to see you. Happy summer. Uh, Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Josh. Yeah, happy summer to you as well. How's the summer been so far? Obviously, it didn't start as late as I'm sure you and the Penguins would have hoped with regard to last season, but at the same time, a, a little extra time to recuperate and rest up and, and get set for the 2021-22 campaign. Yeah, uh, you know, my summer started off, I guess, not the greatest. I had, had to get some surgery done um, and then just kind of stuck around Pittsburgh and rehabbed that injury um, there with the, the PT, Mike, at UPMC. And yeah, just kind of getting back onto the ice past couple weeks and feels good to be back out there. Other than that, uh, kind of taking it easy, spending some time outside, which I love to do. Uh, the weather's been pretty good overall as far as Pittsburgh is concerned, so pretty happy about that. And, uh, yeah, just stuck around Pittsburgh for most of the summer so far. Not a bad place to spend your summer, and I'm glad you're uh, you're on the road to recovery and then some post-surgery there. I was a little bit worried about you this summer because of that surgery and how it may impact the disc golf game. I can confirmed based on your Instagram that it has not impacted it. It seems to be <laughs> out there uh, quite a bit. But uh, take us through get disc golf in general, because I think a lot of people know that you play it. They know it's something that you're really interested in and also really good at from what we've seen. Uh, how did that come about? And what exactly is it, I guess, with respect to regular golf? Yeah, good question. Um, it's definitely one of the, the more niche sports out there. You know, some people – kind of know about it and uh you know a lot of people have never really even heard of it so um kind of interesting the way i got started with disc golf uh my uncle came up to visit us in new hampshire and he somehow stumbled upon a disc golf video of the you know professionals playing and on youtube you know they they have a ton of coverage on youtube of disc golf tournaments and and pro events and all that stuff so he had stumbled upon this this was probably five years ago now. And uh, he's like, you know, this, have you ever heard of this? And I was like, I don't, I think I played that one time at a park somewhere with a buddy, you know, and he's like, it looks kind of cool. Like, do you want to go try it out? So we, you know, got on the Google machine and found a, a store near us that sold discs, like actual disc golf discs, not um, ultimate Frisbees, which they're very different. And so we, we went, grabbed a couple of those, me, my dad, my uncle, and we went out to the nearest course and I threw one throw and it was actually, looking back on it, it was shockingly good for my first throw ever. And I was <laughs> like, wow, this is really cool. I want to be good at this. Um, I was kind of hooked right away. I just took one throw and I, I wanted to be good. So that's kind of how I got started. And, you know, as a sport, it's, it's kind of perfect for me in the sense that I love being outside. Um, it's really relaxing, uh, just kind of walking around the woods, either by yourself or with a buddy, um, mm-hmm. which I just love. You know, I love being outside and enjoying the outdoors. And uh, it doesn't take very long. It's not like a regular golf round where you're out there for four hours just grinding away, you know, stuck behind you know, some, some slow players or whatever, and your whole day is gone. I know I can go, if, if I'm by myself, I can bang out around and, you know, hour, 15 minutes, hour and a half, and just kind of get in, get out and, you know, get a little bit of a walk in, a little bit of a sweat and uh, have a good time. So I like being competitive with myself too. It's, it's kind of like golf in that regard where, you know, you're playing against the course, you're playing against whatever you shot last round, you're, you're trying to beat that kind of thing. And, just trying to make good shots. So it's pretty interesting. I've I've dragged a couple of teammates out. I've dragged one of our trainers out. You know, I, I drag whoever I can to to come along with me and experience it and you know give a couple pointers here and there. But uh you know, overall I try and go with other people as much as I can, but I also, you know, enjoy going by myself. It's pretty relaxing as well. Yeah, you mentioned the the disc itself. So that answered a question I had. I, you know, I have never played. So maybe one time I can get out with you and you can teach me a thing or two. But 
the frisbee is different from the disc, and that's so. Is the disc like a heavier object, or is it lighter? What's the difference? Uh, the weights vary. You know, you can you can buy different weighted discs. Um, overall, it's pretty similar weight to an ultimate frisbee. I think ultimate frisbees are around like 180 grams, and 180 grams is a max weight that you can have for a disc for disc golf. Okay. Um, they don't make them any heavier, so. The weight is actually pretty similar. It's the size and the shape and everything. Um, you know, diameter wise, an ultimate Frisbee is, I don't know, like that. And a disc golf is like that. So yeah, probably, you know, more, a little bit more than half, half as big as an ultimate Frisbee. It's like the diameter is, uh, is different, but I think the coolest thing about disc golf, I'm about to nerd out on everyone here, but all you know all the discs do different things um based on you know whether it's a putter a mid-range a fairway driver a driver and then beyond that you can get discs that are overstable um you know stable understable and that's whether they want to you know do they go harder right out of your hand do they stay pretty straight you know if you're a good player or um, you can actually get them to turn over and, and work uh, left to right as well. So uh, it's pretty cool. You can really throw any shot. If you're a good player, you can really throw any shot that you want. You can start it on any angle and make it do certain things. And so there's a lot that goes into it. And it's a lot more compli complicated than people think. It's not just, you know, one, one or two discs. Um, you know, I have a whole backpack filled with like, 25 different discs and they all do different things and I know what they do and depending on the shot, you know, I choose a certain disc and a certain release angle, forehand, backhand, whatever. So it's definitely pretty cool figuring out how to attack certain holes and certain lines and um, yeah, changing up courses is obviously fun. Granted, there's only a certain amount and you can't play a different course every every day, but um, you know, Pittsburgh is great for disc golf. There's a lot of amazing courses around here. It's one of the best cities in the country as far as disc golf courses is, is uh, concerned. So pretty lucky. Going to get to that aspect in a second. But as I mentioned, by trade, you're a goalie. Uh, you talk about all the, the discs that you have, 25, I think you said, in your backpack. So obviously, with goaltenders, as far as hockey is concerned, you guys can be almost the most personality-driven position in the sense that you can design your helmet, I know guys at all positions have their names on their sticks, whatnot. Do you do anything with your Frisbees? Do you have any special designs or do you have like the, the Smith and the number one on each Frisbee or the weight, whatnot? Uh, okay, so yes and no. Um, my friends always laugh at me because I have like a dark gray backpack and then most, the vast majority of my discs are bright yellow. Um, they're kind of like color coordinated and my friends always make fun of me because not many disc golfers have the, the obsession to color coordinate all their discs like I do. So, um, I mean, you did say you were a nerd, so we, we yeah, yeah, exactly. So I do try and, you know, a little bit of color coordination in there for the, for the penguins colors. And then, um, I've actually received a couple discs as gifts that are really cool. Um, I got one from a fan in Texas, actually, very random. Um, it was when I was in the AHL. We were down playing the Texas Stars, and a, you know, a fan came up to me and, and gave me a disc with a pe big penguin on it. And it's I, in my bag still, and I, I love that disc. I use it all the time. That's cool. I got one from my dad for Christmas that just had a number one on it, and it was yellow with uh, – a black number one on it, which I like. I, li I like that disc a lot. Um, but other than that, I mean, they're pretty stock designs. You know, they say like the name of the disc and the flight numbers or whatnot. So disc golf is pretty cool where, you know, there's tons and tons of different designs on discs, different molds, different, different everything. So you really can kind of mix and match your bag and you can find some pretty cool designs out there. But, um, all of my discs don't match each other. They're they're all a little bit different, but uh, I have some cool ones in there as well. Well, you mentioned having some of your teammates play disc golf with you at times and getting them roped in. I feel like much like how 
Gino is the guy who wears the random animals on his flat brim hats and is kind of the expert at that. No one really can really step into that realm like he can. No one can be the disc golf guy like Casey DeSmith. So who have you brought out? Who's it kind of stuck with? Uh, who have been some of the, the good guys and, and some of the disasters out there on the course? <laughs> Such a good question. Uh, so the person it stuck with the most, uh, I'm sure a lot of people know this, is uh, Larmy, Emil Larmy. Yeah. When I was down in the AHL, uh, we played all the time. There's not a whole lot to do in Wilkes. And so I was able to drag him out quite a bit. And he kind of got a little bit hooked. You know, he, he was always willing to go and he started to get better. Uh, and we always had a really good time playing. Um, actually, so we're bringing back Dom Simone, as a lot of people know, I'm sure. And I used to go with Dom once in a while back when we played in, in Wilkes-Barre together. So, yeah, Dom Simone is actually maybe the best one, best person or teammate I've taken out right away. Um, okay. He's a really, really phenomenal athlete. He's amazing at soccer, amazing at ping pong, obviously really good at hockey. <laughs> so Dom is a very good athlete, and I took him out, and he was naturally pretty good at it. Um, so I All think right. that's why he kind of – wanted to go back because he he wasn't uh, a disaster as as you would say <laughs> someone who was a disaster and i hope everybody gives him grief is uh teddy bluger oh he was uh really? not not a fan and to this day he makes fun of me all the time for playing disc golf and uh, <laughs> i just like to tell him it's because he was terrible and he's not a good athlete so well i mean fair enough he, he's a friend of <laughs> You know, the summer shift, so he, he doesn't even have a chance to rebuke that. We'll ride with what you said. He was a disaster. He was a disaster, <laughs> yeah. Such a poor sport, too. Unbelievable. <laughs> but great hair. Great hair. Great um, hair. All right, let's let's keep finish up with the uh, disc golf talk. I, I did want to ask you, you mentioned there being a lot of great courses out here. Um, I talked to your teammate, Kasperi Kapanen, a little bit earlier in this segment. Uh, he is a big golfer. And he mentioned, you know, the one place that stood out for him that was kind of the mecca that he got a chance to play was Augusta. Is there a, a quote-unquote mecca for for uh, disc golf? Is it here in Western Pennsylvania? Is there a place that you and people who are really into it and competing it would kind of refer to as the spot? Yeah, there's a couple that come to mind for sure. I mean, they have a disc golf pro tour, and a lot of the courses they play around the country are – you know, tops. They're they're some of the hardest, some of the the best designed and the best maintained for sure. But uh, I would say the two biggest ones, and I'm actually when I head back out east, I'm gonna play uh, all three of these courses with my best friend who I roped into disc golf as well. We're gonna go on a little <laughs> disc golf trip. But uh, Maple Hill in Worcester, Massachusetts, is widely known as probably the best course in the in the world and wow. one of the one of the most well known for sure it's they've had a lot of pro tournaments there um and yeah it's it's very official as, as far as disc golf is concerned it's it's no augusta but uh it's a nice <laughs> course and then up in uh smugglers notch vermont actually there's two courses right next to each other um absolutely beautiful it's there's mountains in the background and there's like a wide open course and then next to it there's more of a wooded course but both courses are you know they're five out of five stars they're they're really great courses super fun to play really challenging from the from the long tees um so i'm excited to go actually play all three of those courses with my best friend soon so it's uh, gonna be a good trip yeah, that sounds like that'll be a lot of fun. A good final trip before the season starts, too. And you mentioned that'll take you back to New England, back east. Uh, just a couple guys that come to mind when I think about New England would be a couple natives of the, the region. Uh, John Krasinski, uh, Steve Carell are two guys in general that just popped to mind for some reason when you said that. Because when I'm talking to you, I have to have the office uh, at the forefront of my mind. I know from talking to you in the past, this is a show that you hold near and dear. I think you're like many in that respect, myself included. Hilarious show, probably the, one of the best comedy sitcom TV shows in the history of television. 
Um, but I'm going to put you on the spot here. If you if you look back at that show now a few years past its final episode, uh, who was your favorite character on The Office? Who kind of roped you in and, and kept you coming back for more? Oh, that's an easy question. Uh, Michael Scott is synonymous with The Office. And, um, you know, I always preface saying how obsessed I am with The Office by saying, you know, only the first seven seasons. And when Michael leaves, I, I kind of check out. I, I restart the show as soon as Michael leaves, and that's <laughs> it. I I remember I went to an office trivia night with my sister, and we did really well on any question that was the first seven seasons, and then anything after that, I was useless. I think <laughs> I've seen the last couple seasons twice, and I think I've seen the first seven seasons over 15 times. So I'm wow. definitely like... I recycle those first seven seasons because I think Michael makes the whole show and without him, it's not even close. So yeah, if Steve Carell comes back and starts doing The Office, I'll start watching. But until then, I, I think I'm done. That's fair. There was a you know a pretty big rotation, as you know, in those final few seasons before things wrapped up. I actually read this book. I wanted to bring it here. I don't know if you had a chance to read this book by Andy Green. Oh, you have? I have that upstairs, yep. <laughs> the classic. Some great stories in there as far as how they got things recruited with the cast and all that kind of stuff. Um, you look back on that, and as you mentioned, uh, the last couple seasons, obviously a little different. But did you ever watch the last episode, like the final one of The Office? Did you cry? No, didn't cry. Really? No, so I didn't cry. That. Okay. I, I thought we were going to be on the same page back then. So <laughs> I no. can tell you exactly. I feel like it would going. take a lot for me to cry, but. Uh... No, I know what you're saying. A little bit of a tearjerker there for sure. Yeah, I remember being actually, you were on the trip a few years back when we went to Western Canada. We were going up to Banff and I was on the highway and everyone's looking out the window, looking at all these beautiful mountains. And I was finishing on my phone the last episode and I just started crying while I was watching it. People were like, what's wrong? I'm like the mountains are beautiful. The mountains are beautiful. I was <laughs> just crushed. I mean, they bring back Michael Scott. Yeah, I don't want to ruin it for anyone out there. But uh, yeah, it, it was, you know, that was a great show. Uh, do you got do you find yourself quoting it often? Or is it kind of something that in conversation stays away from your your verbiage? Yeah, my my sisters wish that it did. They always say uh, <laughs> that I have an office quote for everything. And uh, it's very true. It's I can't even help myself if it just pops into my head. And I say it and they look at me, you know, they, they know the office, they've seen it, but they don't know it like I know it. And they just look at me and they're like, that's from the office, isn't it? And they're like, obviously. <laughs> so so I, I don't want to jump too far ahead here because we do have a question from the fan about the office. So I don't want to steal their thunder, but I just got to say, you know what, actually, we're going to go to that right now. We'll go to the questions from the fans here because uh, we have a few of them here. And I want to start with... Uh, this one about the office, just kind of rolling into what we were just talking about at Kai to the Lee wants to know what your favorite episode was of the show. Oh, see, now that's a hard question. <laughs> uh, Generally, I don't come up with those kind of things. Yeah, that's really hard. Um, I usually I usually say basketball. It's really hard to to not love that one. There's there's not a dull moment in that one, you know, and it's just so easy to laugh at that one. Um, so that one's good. I think some of the earliest episodes, like Diversity Day, granted, you see, it, you know, Michael Scott isn't quite, you know, his true self yet because, and, you know, Dwight isn't really Dwight yet. Like all the characters kind of evolve into something different. And so you kind of lose a little bit of that because it's such an early episode. But I mean, there's a lot of laughs in that episode as well. So there's some there's some pretty funny ones. I still think that there's no episode that starts better than the fire drill with Dwight. Like that whole scene to begin the episode is just one of the greatest scenes in TV, I think, in the history. Just so funny to start that episode. It's unbelievable. I actually saw um, on Instagram the other day, there was an intro. So they always do that. Um, like the cold start where it just goes right into a scene. Mm -hmm. And there was one where Jim was pranking Dwight 
and making him think he was in the Matrix, which then they never put in the show, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of in a late, it was supposed to be in a later episode when Dwight is finally manager. And I was getting a kick out of it because it was the whole cast and they were just reading it, you know, like in uh, a cast, whatever, reading session. Right. And I was like dying laughing. I was like, why on earth did they not put this in the show? Like it was, it was great. <laughs> it makes you wonder what else was left out when you hear stuff like that and how funny it was. Exactly. Like, can we just get another season and just put everything that they left out in? <laughs> I'm in. I'd sign up. I know a lot of people would. Let's see. We got some other questions here. This one's from your uh, your friends at Penguins. You may know them. Uh, world famous on Twitter. They uh, said, if you had to choose one of these activities, which would you go with? Bowling or mini golf? Mini golf, without question. Um, I like mini good? golf a lot. Uh, yeah. I like golf. I am terrible at bowling. <laughs> and just doesn't. Uh, yeah, that's like the one sport where I'm like completely useless for some reason. So definitely, uh, you know, outside little mini golf. I'll take that any day. Okay, I'm, I'm with you there. Mini golf is uh, hard to beat in that situation. Nikki uh, N. Schoenberger on Twitter wants to know, and we will uh, tell if, you know, if Lexi and Alex Trinker are listening right now, they can put the earmuffs on. What's your go-to fast food meal? Fast food. Uh, Chick-fil-A, for sure. Sure. Uh, um, Probably like a deluxe spicy chicken sandwich with waffle fries and a lemonade. That is very particular. You nailed it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, I eat so that, that more than Al uh, would want me to, I think. So. <laughs> I mean, there are a few in Cranberry that I can think of off the top of my mind. So There's uh, one yeah, like having... right next to my house. It's dangerous. <laughs> that, that is dangerous. The dipping sauce is, is uh, tough to beat from Chick-fil-A. For sure. The next question is from Caleb. This one brings you back to disc golf wants to know he's at kylab116 on twitter by the way wants to know would you rather get one ace around in disc golf and be garbage the rest of the round for the rest of your life or never ace again and go 15 under par every round for the rest of your life easily the second one easily yeah it's it was funny i was telling my friend about this the other day but so I've been playing disc golf for about five years now. And in my first two and a half years of playing, when I, you know, I was okay, but I'm much better now than I was then. I had five aces in my first two and a half years of playing disc golf. And then I've obviously gotten quite a bit better since then. In like the next two and a half years, I have zero aces. It makes no sense. Um, <laughs> I don't know how that works. So basically, Caleb, I I was the first golfer, the the first part of the question, that was me two and a half years ago. And then <laughs> now I'm the second golfer. I'm much better and I score much better and throw much better, but uh, no aces. So I'm waiting, but uh, I'm kind of losing hope here. Well, you're, you're at least more consistent. We'll take that with you. That That's probably yeah. what you strive for in that game anyway, right? Exactly. Those are the questions from the fans. We uh, have six straight up questions now that I'm going to ask you that we're asked to everyone before you. There's a couple in here that have some twists and turns in them, so bear with me. But I think we'll have some fun here, uh, beginning with the first one. Now, I know, Casey, and knowing you over the last handful of seasons, you're not superstitious, but you are a little stitious. So can you tell me the one superstition that you have or something that jumps out to you? It's hard to say what's like a routine and what's a superstition. Um, yeah. I think that's where I kind of get stuck on that question. Like, I don't have anything that I think is just like stupid that I have to do. And <laughs> okay. in my mind, I think I think that's what like a superstition is. It's like something that wouldn't make any sense to anyone else, but like you have to do it. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have any of that. I don't have to like listen to a certain song or wear a certain pair of socks. I mean, I had some a pair of socks with penguins on it that I went on a little bit of a win streak this year with. So that's probably the closest I'll get is if, like, you know, I'll wear, like, my penguin socks. Or, and I'll say they're good luck, but I know that's, that's not the socks. So. 
So see, you actually wear those socks and then contribute to the team winning. Dan Potash has a pair of Penguin socks that he claims are the reason why the team wear, wins when he wears them. But that's, as you know, just Dan being Dan. Yeah, of course. Well, the Penguin socks, man, I don't know. It might be something to them. We might have to get the whole team on board. All right, that's fine. We sign them up. <laughs> uh, so you know, nothing like with equipment. I know some guys say like, "Oh, I'll put my my left pad, the shin pad on before my right." Like, would you put yours on that way? Your blocker before your glove? Anything like that? No. Nope. Nothing. All right, that's probably for the best. And you know what? Now that I think about it, I remember a couple of years ago, you were doing the pregame soccer. You did the availability. People were like, "Oh my gosh, the starting goaltender is." acknowledging that there are people in the dressing room before the game starts. I mean, you just seem to be a little bit more laid back in that sense, right? Yeah, I've just always played better when I'm, you know, relaxed and having fun and smiling. And, you know, if I'm like going through a warm up with headphones in by myself and just not talking to anyone, I don't feel like I'm as relaxed. I don't feel like I'm having as much fun. And so I don't think I play as well when I do that. So I don't know. I just, Something that works for me that probably doesn't work for other goalies or other players, but you know, for me, that's where I feel most comfortable, and I guess that's all that matters. The next one is something you can't live without. My cat Yoda. Is this the hairless cat that I've heard about? Yoda's a fitting name. Yeah, yeah, he kind of resembles him. He's a little cuter than Yoda, though. He's not anywhere around here right now, right? We can't bring him into the, the screen. Uh, he's upstairs sleeping. Okay. Yeah. He was playing with a little doggy friend yesterday, and I think he got tuckered out because the, the dog was, like, chasing him all over the house and stuff. So he was. <laughs> I think he's catching up on his sleep a little bit. All right. Fair enough. So Yoda, uh, what kind of cat is he? He is a Bambino hairless sphinx cat. So Whoa. he's hairless sphinx. Um and then he's Bambino because he has, like, short little legs. That's, like, the the exact – if someone were to say to me, what kind of a cat would a goalie have? <laughs> you just said it right there. I can't even – Mr. Like, like Mr. Bigglesworth, right? Like, yeah, yeah, Mr. Bigglesworth. That's that's a good comparison, actually. Are you, get, you get your Dr. Evil on sometimes with him or no? Yeah, I'll just have to find a mini-me. No, he's awesome. He uh, He has such a good personality. Like, growing up, I really did not like cats at all um but he is way more like a dog personality wise than a cat okay. he plays he loves playing games he's actually like kind of annoying with how much he wants to play like it's even more than a dog it's like if i'm sitting on the couch like playing video games or watching tv or something he's like all over me to to play with him and uh he has all his favorite toys and all this stuff and you know, when I get home, he'll, like, greet me at the door and meow and, like, nuzzle my face. And, yeah, in the mornings, I'll come up and, like, snuggle with me. And, yeah, he's he's a good cat. Yeah, I mean, sounds like it. Checks all the boxes there. So, obviously, as you said, someone you cannot live without. Uh, you mentioned you're in Pittsburgh this summer. I know you got the trip for disc golf uh, with your best friend coming up here shortly. Any other vacations planned, or is it kind of just – lock and load till the season starts at that point yeah i mean i didn't i didn't take any vacations this year i went to a couple weddings um out of town with and saw some saw some family saw some friends my sister got married back in new hampshire so i was back there for a weekend Congrats. Um, yeah thank you and uh so other than that i'm just heading back to new hampshire train a little bit on the ice back there and then yeah take those three or four days and go go play some disc golf with my friend but That'll be my vacation for this for this year, and then I'll I'll be right back in Pittsburgh training at the beginning of September. Great, yeah, looking forward. I mean, it's going to be here before we know it. Um, a couple more things. First of all, we've had this with a, a few other people, actually everyone before you. I got my first victory last week with Mike Matheson, so you can put your teammates and your head coach Mike Sullivan back in the win column because those are the guys that have gone before you and stumped me here. We're going to play two truths and a lie, so. If you not, I'm sure you, if you don't know how this works, you're going to feed me three things right now. One of them is not true. I have to guess the one that's not true. If I don't guess it, you win. If I do guess it, I'm two for my last two, which is a thousand batting percentage. We'll disregard the previous four. Okay. 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 I need, I need like 10 seconds at least here. It's okay. Yep. All right. 
I almost quit hockey for lacrosse when I was 13 years old. I went to two different high schools and my favorite food is buffalo chicken tenders. Who? Well, you mentioned the Chick-fil-A. I mean, I'm going to go with you went to two different high schools as the lie. No, yeah, that's the lie. I actually yes. went to, I went I went to three different high schools. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I should have used that one as a truth. I should have said that I went to three different high schools as one of the truths. Yeah, I would have totally bid on that. I mean, I've been Missed on opportunity. <laughs> next time. Next time. Next time. You're, you're too good. All right. Yeah, I mean, I am, I guess. Two for my last two. So whoever's next, pressure's on them to put me back in my place. But I'll, I'll ride the wave until then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got the next one for you, Casey. Um, I, I've had a lot of fun with this one. And I, I'm thinking, you know, you – seem to be a pretty bright individual so you might be able to lend some vocal cords to what i need now uh your first ever album that you owned or cd if you think back to that i'm sure there was like a very popular song on that album by whoever it was a band an artist whoever could you hum that song for me so i could try to guess what it is oh my gosh i am not musically talented um (laughs) all right here it goes Okay. All the small things. There you go. All right. See, you are musically talented. That was, <laughs> that was actually the best humming I've heard yet. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty simple. A couple couple tones and you would get that one. But uh, yeah, you yeah. nailed it. Yes. All right. I'll take it. We're, we're on a good run right now. Um, I will say, I think uh, Kasperi Kapanen's was Lose Yourself by Eminem. Okay. And we tried to hum it. Uh, I was just gonna let him go the whole song. I, <laughs> I gotta going. hear that. Where can I look this up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that one was good. That was, as you said, pretty simple, but you got it done. Uh, so we'll wind down here with one final thing, Casey. Uh, just for everyone out there who's watching, who's tuning in, if they're thinking to themselves, "Man, there's something I need to get into for myself right now." Like summer's winding down here. We're in the quote-unquote dog days. You guys are a month and a couple weeks away from training camp kicking off. Give us a recommendation of something you're currently into. It could be a, a TV show, a book, a movie, song, podcast, a workout, anything like that. Okay, I'll do uh, a couple here. So TV show I just finished was Dr. Death. That was really good. It's on Peacock with like Alec Baldwin and – the guy who plays Charlie from the Mighty Ducks, I don't know his name. But, oh, uh, Joshua Conway? Or no, wait, Joshua Jackson. Joshua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was really, really good TV show. I don't get hooked on TV shows that easily, and I was hooked. I had a couple late nights watching that. That was a lot later than I wanted it to be because I couldn't turn it off. So that was a good TV show. And then uh, – Actually, the speaking of Blink-182, the lead singer um, actually just kind of came out with, like, his own band, kind of, um, okay. called Angels and Airwaves. And it's if you like that kind of music, like Blink-182, it's really good. Okay. So Angels and Airwaves and Dr. Death. You got right. it. Sounds like a good way to wind down the summer with some disc golf in between and then some Penguins hockey in September, October, and we hope way longer into the spring and early summer next year. Casey, really appreciate you taking the time. Glad to see you're doing well, more than on the road to recovery, and looking forward to seeing you back on the ice in person and at PPG Paints Arena attending goal this season. You and me both. Thanks, Josh. All right, that's Casey DeSmith, Penguins goaltender. This has been Episode 6 of the Summer Shift presented by U.S. Steel. We'll catch you next time.